So she had gastric bypass two years ago, and this is what she looks like. All right. If you all, if anybody here is planning the gastric bypass or the sleeve or any kind of gastric um, surgery to reduce your weight, find the people that are successful and focus on them. Do not listen to people like this for your inspiration. I mean, unless you're one of those people who gets motivated by other people's failures. Um, you know, I guess that would be okay. But for me, anytime that I've wanted to do something, I seek out the people who have succeeded. Well, hello, beautiful people. It's Mama Goo. Happy Monday. And um, I figured we'd do something a little bit different today. Um, I want to take a look and see where Alexandra Rodriguez is now. It looks like a few days ago she posted a little bit more of a meaty update. It's a sit down, let's talk. She's going to talk about diet culture. So um, other than that, I'm not really sure what she's going to say. But how about we take a look at it together? So I'm probably going to... Um skip around a lot in this. There's just things she's going to cover that I, or talk about that I don't really want to talk about. But um, let's get started though from the beginning. Hello you guys. Welcome back to a new video. Doing something a little bit different today. We are going to mukbang slash eat and do a little Q&A and just a little chit chat session and talk. So I just went to the gym and then picked up a harvest bowl from Sweet Green. This is like my favorite she just went to the gym, guys. Favorite salad. I mean, it's like more of a bowl. It's so good. They put the... So good. So good. Uh, almonds on the side, I guess, so they don't get soggy. But look at her in all her glory. I don't even like kale like that. But in this salad, it hits different. So I was... I hate that term. It hits different. What really does that even mean? Talking about recently um, in a video about how I am trying to get back to like doing things that bring me joy. Like, So what do you think she does that doesn't bring her joy? Choosing love over fear and just like following my heart. And like in the past I have done, if I wanna like show this, cause it's just so like pretty. In the past I've done videos like this before. Where's all the goat cheese? So in the past I've done videos Imagine that a $20 salad doesn't have a lot of goat cheese. Just like this. Mm. Just like a eat and talk with me if you don't like chewing. Oh my gosh, she's going to be talking with her mouth full this whole time. I don't know how far we're going to make it, guys. And talking, maybe skip this one. This is so good. I haven't had this in a while. But I used to like do videos like this sometimes where I'd sit and eat. I remember I did one and I was eating a salad and I got like destroyed. It's like, oh, fat person eating a salad. Uh, okay. This will be worse because I just came from the gym too. Oh my gosh, she came from the gym and now she's eating a salad. She's the picture of health. Because I'm like afraid to post these kinds of things now just because you just never know like what people will say. Hi. That must be our husband. <laughs> huh? Okay, y'all got his salad. Anyway, what was I saying? Basically how I want to- Guys, is it me or does she look really big? Um, so I'm, again, I'm not a fan of hers, but I don't know, man, for somebody who's had a gastric bypass like a year or two ago, she's pretty big still. I don't know. I get back to like doing stuff that I enjoy and like, I kind of, I love watching like people talk and eat. So what is she doing again? Is she going to tell us what she was doing right now that she doesn't enjoy that she wants to stop and do more things she enjoys from what I know about her? You know, her only job is really YouTube. She doesn't have children. I mean, I think they're trying to have children. Um, she goes to the gym and she um, does YouTube. I don't know. Does she clean her own house? Probably. But other than that, you know, what does she do? Eat, especially like if I'm eating by myself. So, you know, I hope that we can eat together and hang out. And like, I don't want to, me being a big person to like deter me from doing what brings me joy. And that. So what do you mean, being a big person, do, deferring or deterring her from doing what brings her joy? What does she want to do that she can't do now? Does she want to climb Mount Everest? I don't get it. It's like filming a chatty sit-down eating video with you guys. In other words, she's like 
I'm taking this as a big virtue signal because I'm telling you, a lot of us people, big, small, medium, we would love to have this lifestyle. It's after the gym, eating a salad where I'm prone to get, you know, hate on because, oh, she's lying. She doesn't like salad. She didn't go to the gym. I also asked you guys on Instagram to send in questions and we can do like a little Q&A, chit chat. So one thing lately, like I said recently in a vlog, it's like the older you get and like the busier life gets, I'm sure this happens too, like when you become a parent, because like you kind of lose track of yourself and like what brings you joy because you just... Well, true. Uh, that is true. But how would she know it? I don't know. She seems like the most unqualified person to have this conversation with us right now. Get like in the groove of the mundane, the day-to-day -day life, get caught in the routine. But like, I like kind of hit a burnout, especially after filming Curvy Connection. And you know, Yarman said to me, he's like, what do you do that brings you joy? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Working her whole life. And, um, you know, that I didn't watch the curvy connection or whatever it is, but I imagine that was a lot of work. Brings me joy. That really can't be like the only thing. You know, I like taking the dog for a walk or scrolling on TikTok, but like, it's so, you gotta find stuff for you that brings you joy. Like, what do you guys do for like relaxation and for hobbies? I, I play Candy Crush. I was like looking up like groups in my area to like, Oh, and I watch silly LOL cow YouTubes and play Candy Crush at the same time. Yeah, that's what I do to relax. Find a hobby. Like, I feel like as an adult, it's really kind of hard. I've been getting back into reading. I just like, I don't know. I do find- Does she have any girlfriends? Like, does she? do they have friends? Do they have other friends that are couples? You know, that could be a big hobby, hanging out with people. Um, hosting dinners. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe she does that. Not sure. I find a lot of joy in cooking new recipes. I do find a lot of joy in my job, which I know I'm like super fortunate to have that privilege, but I don't know. What else brings me joy? Besides Christmas. Can Christmas be a hobby? Let's get into some of these questions. Oh my God. I'm sorry in advance for all the chewing. That's what this is. Okay. Please help with gym anxiety. I've already lost 100 pounds, but so nervous to go to the gym. I love you. I love you too. <sighs> yeah, I'm curious to see what this person's anxious about at the gym. Is it the way they look? Is it loose excess skin? Um, that's interesting. Gym anxiety. Gym anxiety. I'm trying to go, go back mentally to back when like, I had more gym anxiety when I was younger. In a way, I've kind of never had like a lot of gym anxiety purely because I've been going to the gym since I was like 10 years old <laughs> with my grandmother. And looking back, that in itself is like kind of traumatic. <laughs> Why? Why is that traumatic? That seems like a nice thing that your grandmother did for you. I am very much a victim of diet culture. Are we gonna see Amber Lynn say that same thing in the next couple videos that you're a victim of diet culture? If you were a victim, guys, it's it's very hard for me to have this reaction with a person who has obviously failed in her diet. This endless hamster wheel of like trying to lose weight from like being a child. And I think I've had to really, really like work to change my relationship with food in the gym. I'm not perfect by any means, but like. She's not even close. I've been going to the gym consistently now for almost a year. In a couple months, you know, I've been going consistently and using uh, Copilot now for, yeah, almost a year. Oh boy, does she sponsor for Copilot? Um, I was going to do a glitter and lasers video today um, because she, Anna O'Brien, is is on We Govy. And let me tell you, she's lost a lot of weight. But, um, you know, a few weeks or months ago, she um, did a sponsorship for um, Copilot. So people were kind of saying, oh, you know, she's not being genuine. She's doing the sponsorship and she's on a weight loss med. You can do both at one time. You know, fitness is great. I'm not saying don't do fitness. Fitness is vital. But don't think that that's the only thing you need to lose weight. It's not. And it's the first time in my life I like go purely to like feel strong and healthy. And like, I've seen my health improve in so many ways, like outside of the scale, like non-scale victories. Sorry, that I'm getting a little bit, a little bit off track here with the, with the answer to that. But I've been going to the gym for so long. Um, I almost, I almost feel like I was kind of eased into it, but um, 
I think with gym anxiety is something that goes with like a whole blanket of life. The older I get, the more I realize no one's looking at you. That's not true. People are looking at you, but the older you get, the more you don't give any fucks to that. No one's looking at the things that you're insecure about. Everyone is genuinely focused on themselves. The older I Yeah, mm, people judge. People, I mean, it's a reality, guys. I know it's not nice and it's not a good, happy thought, but people judge. They're like looking at you, ooh, am I as big as that girl? Or ooh, are my, do my thighs look that bad? You know, get over it. It happens. It's, it's human nature. Accept it. Know that it's a them problem and move on and do your workout. I get like the more people I talk to, they're like, I'm never like looking at anyone around me or judging them. Like they're worried about themselves. If in a. Yeah, of course they're going to say that. Who says, oh, I'm going to judge this person? You know, this. Okay, fine. A rare occasion someone's like looking at you. Doesn't matter. Like it just doesn't matter. Those people like don't. That is true matter in your life and it says so much more about them than you. Um, I guess I did actually have a little bit of gym anxiety when I started going last year um, and using Copilot because I was like kind of worried about like doing the moves and finding the equipment especially when you go in the beginning so like go easy on yourself like again no one's looking at you if you're like looking around trying to find the equipment you need or like you're worried about like doing a move wrong it just like really doesn't matter no one's looking at you no one well, I've had people before say to me, you know, hey, you're not using this right. Why don't you try this, this, and this? Because you could really hurt yourself if you're not doing it right. It's judging you. I will say it helps a lot to have a program, like me using Copilot, because like I can see how they do the moves. You know, she, she, my trainer, Leslie, tracks it on my watch and can like tell me like, go higher. Yeah, but still nothing compares to a personal trainer, at least the first time, second time, third time you go to the gym. A lot of times they'll offer packages when you sign up to um, have a few sessions with the personal trainer. I highly recommend that. You don't have to keep them, but it is good to have somebody help you learn to use the machines and who, who can see what you're doing and sort of guide you to do it right so you don't hurt yourself. I don't know if somebody online tracking you with your watch, I don't know if that's enough. I mean, I don't think it is. Higher, go lower, which is really cool. That helps a lot. That gave me a bit more confidence. So it might help to have like some sort of program or video to watch. So you like. Or go with a friend. Who <laughs> Hopefully your friend knows how to use the machines because otherwise it's like the blind leading the blind know what you want to do but start slow go in kind of assess the situation find where the weights are or the machines you want to do and just remember that like it's highly unlikely that anyone is looking at you i'm assuming that's what the anxiety is about that was what it was for me like it's kind of like i don't know where the equipment is or i hope people don't judge me because i'm doing this move wrong so it's kind of you know you'll get more comfortable with time and sometimes you have to just go through the uncomfortable stuff to like get to the other side yeah that that is true yep and then it's like just totally worth it. A few questions regarding TTC and saying like... TTC is trying to conceive. She's been talking about this a bit. I, To me, this is more emotional than the weight loss or the weight subject because it's it's traumatic. If you can't conceive, it's just a whirlwind of of brain and fuckery. So your one year of trying is coming up. Are you going to be looking into treatments? There's a lot more to that stuff that I'm just like not ready to talk about. That's why I just haven't been talking about it and I'm not really planning to for now. What was so it? I skipped a little bit. Um, somebody asked her about being an only child. Um, and then, I don't know, she was talking about like folding laundry and how cathartic it is for her <laughs> anxiety. Oh, I think it's because somebody asked her um, what her most hated chore was. And I agree. I hate doing laundry. And I don't find folding and putting away clothes anxiety reducing at all. But now she's going to talk a little about a workshop she's um, she's joined related to her inner child. And she's just done it. So she doesn't know much. But I thought this was interesting because she talks about trauma. Okay. Because trauma seems to be a big thing in girl world. Well, really, you know, with a lot of people, understandably. But You'll see what she says here, and I'll point out what just doesn't sound right to me. Inner Child Healing Workshop. 
I will say I'm still very early in on it, so I can keep you guys posted later on. But I actually need to set aside some time to like do the whole course. It's like four hours in total um, with like, you know, obviously work to continue on outside of that, but four hours of content to watch. And I'm like a quarter of the way through it, but I, you have to like really set aside time and like be in the right headspace for it. Yeah, usually those things are not passive activities. Because it's basically going through like traumas throughout your life. I'll get more in depth of it as I go because I'm like still really early on, but you don't even really realize things that were like traumatic to you. Yeah, this is where I start to have a problem with what she's saying because so life is hard. <clears throat> you don't want to make it harder by going back and saying, you know, what my mom said to me when I was 14 years old, that was really traumatic. I don't know how helpful that is for anybody's mental health. Until you're like, oh, I think I like downplayed that a lot. That was actually like pretty traumatic. I know it's a lot to dig up, but. See, why would you want to dig up something that doesn't bother you? And if it's not like a real big traumatic, you know, essay, abuse, um, you know, all those unfortunate things that happen to children. I mean, maybe you were AVUSED and didn't realize it, I guess. I, I don't know. Eh, this is a touchy subject for me. But, you know, uh, you guys know my best friend Lily. She's been doing a lot of, like, healing stuff, and it's a lot to work through, but you don't realize how much you're carrying with you uh, and how much lighter you can feel once you work through it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess. It just seems to me counterproductive. I mean, if it's in the past and you've forgotten it, assuming it's not like, you know, the root of why you're an alcoholic, I think those types of things should be just left in the past. Because I've, I've actually, I personally, you know, I haven't really talked about it. Cause I'm, I just don't want to talk about it right now online. <laughs> but um, I've gone through a lot the last couple of months. Any idea of what she's talking about, guys? I don't know. I don't I don't watch her enough. I'm just not into like, you know, day in a life videos. I, I uh, just not me, sorry. And I have been I wasn't in a good place for a hot minute. I really wasn't. And I think people forget that, you know, online we don't see everything that people go through, but I was going through a lot for a hot minute. Uh, I was not in a great headspace, and I, that's what kind of led me to do, you know, the workshop. Well, okay, then that explains it. Um, you know, part of me wants her to say what happened, but the other part really understands why she wouldn't want to get into it. And I mean, I guess if she feels she needs it, it's a great workshop. But for the sh regular person who's just, you know, living life... I wouldn't dredge up stuff from your childhood like that. I don't know. And wanting to just like get in a better headspace, I ended up um, increasing my Prozac. I also... See, I agree with this. And I agree that she's making it a multi-level attack. Like I wish Amberlynn Reed would do this. She needs to, um, if not get on Prozac, she needs to find another medication for her depression. Um, and speak to a therapist. Like we saw in that last video, she's got some therapist for something that we don't know what it is. But, um, you know, it's good that she's going back to therapy, but it has to be a multi-prong attack. I started doing uh, morning affirmations. I will link the video. I do it every morning, usually in the car. And I like repeat these things. And I think I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And gosh darn it. People like me. It's supposed to help create like new neural pathways in your head for like positive thinking. And I actually. By the way, if you all know who that quote is from, let me know in the comments. And spoiler alert, this person later became a senator or a representative in Congress. I'm not sure. Like that's really helped. And then just like talking about it, any trauma you go through, it's so hard to talk about, but you have to talk about it. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's good to like get it out and such, but sometimes when people bring stuff up, they tend to wallow in it. 
after. You know, like they forget how bad it hurt. And then when they remember, it's all they could think about. So I don't know. I'm telling you, you will not heal without regurgitating it. You got to get it out of your system, whether you're choosing. So how does she know this? See, that's the thing with these people and, and their advice. What have they lived through that she's healed from? It seems like she's in the process of healing. I don't know. And to like talk to a person, talk to yourself, write it on paper, talk it out in like a voice memo to yourself. You got to talk about it. It's like, it's just, it's so bad to leave it in your body and just letting it fester. Well, if it is festering, like if it's something you think about day after day after day, but why would somebody go looking to dredge it up that they haven't thought about for years? See, that maybe I'm misunderstanding what she's saying, but um, you know, like she's she talked about before, her childhood trauma that she wasn't even she didn't even think was was traumatic until she started thinking about it. Why would you do that to yourself? And that is something, oh my gosh, that is something I've struggled with. And then I've had to really figure out like, why do I do that? Why do I not talk about it? It's just like, I think, I think I, I can feel myself entering a healing. The twilight zone. Healing era of my life. It's all about the eras right now with Taylor Swift, isn't it? So I can feel a change coming within myself. All right, good. And that feels good. I almost feel like I've gone through a lot lately because like God and the universe, whatever you believe in, has been guiding me to heal. Yeah, but it sounds like the God or the universe also drove you to a lot of trauma too. Not going to get into this right now, guys. I have strong feelings. And to grow and some stuff that I needed to work through internally that I didn't even know was a problem. So, um, you know, if you feel, if this resonates with you, it might be happening for you too. You might need to go through some healing, some stuff that maybe you didn't even know was weighing you down. Yeah, I'll let you guys know more about the workshop as it comes. And just on the day-to-day, -day, I would highly recommend writing down what's on your mind and what you're going through. Fill up a whole journal like our friend Amber Lynn. How's your weight loss plateaued? Are you able to eat more foods that you enjoy? Here we go. I think we're coming up on two years. So she had gastric bypass two years ago, and this is what she looks like. All right. If you all, if anybody here is planning the gastric bypass or the sleeve or any kind of gastric um, surgery to reduce your weight, find the people that are successful and focus on them. Do not listen to people like this for your inspiration. I mean, unless you're one of those people who gets motivated by other people's failures. Um, you know, I guess that would be okay. But for me, anytime that I've wanted to do something, I seek out the people who have succeeded. Since my surgery, it is crazy how time flies. I'm going to just say this right here. I'll address it now. I have no interest in talking about weight anymore. I'm f okay. Finally in a happy place. I know people wanted to know for a while. She's in a happy place with her weight? Because of my surgery. And I was public about it. Totally get that. I'm just kind of over talking about it. I feel like I'm in a really good place with like consistent exercise and like. Yeah, but still guys, she's obese. I mean, I don't know what her BMI is, but just by looking at her, she's obese. Now listen, being obese in the BMI scale, I know the BMI scale is not always right, but. She's obviously not a power lifter, okay? She's just not. And um, I think if you want to hang out in the just overweight category, you know, it's probably, it's better to be just a little bit overweight than just a little bit underweight. So um, that's fine, but no, she should not be comfortable at this level. It's not healthy. And it's not also healthy if she's looking to um, conceive a child. <sighs> Trying to be balanced with food, you know, um, my weight loss has been plateaued for months. I ended up years gaining back about 10 pounds of the weight that I lost. I don't know how much she originally lost, but if that's only a 10 pound weight gain, she probably lost m next to nothing. Um, which is like not the worst thing in the world. It was honestly because I went through some stuff um, and I was snacking a lot. Okay, snacking is the kiss of death. Um, 
Personally, I try not to eat three times a day because like if I start out in the morning eating, I feel like I'm eating all day and it's just a nightmare. So I try to eat my first meal at around six. And since I've had the gastric sleeve, I can't eat a lot at once. So I'll like pick on my dinner, like all evening. I'll put it in the microwave, you know, to save it from the dogs getting it and have a couple bites here and there. And then, you know, by the time it's, I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep, I've, have eaten one complete meal. You know, still comfort eating a little bit. I'm not perfect. I've gotten better with like emotional eating, you know. I definitely was like comfort eating for a minute, um, like snacking. Yeah, overall, I'm still really happy with my results. I'm okay with them. Really? How big was she before? Did I miss something? To me, she looked much smaller in, um, in past videos. The size I am. I'm happy, I'm healthy, and that's kind of just like where I'm at with it. And I just have no desire to talk about weight anymore. It's just, for me, it's just run out. Like, <laughs> I got I got bigger fish to fry than talk about weight. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to leave it there. She does talk about baby names and such and just other chatter. I really just wanted to get her update on her weight loss because to me, she looks not good. But let me know what you think. I know... Um, you know, I get two types of comments here. People staunchly defending Alexandra and then other people who are like, yeah, this lady's a train wreck to nobody watched it. So, um, you know, if this interests you, leave a comment. If not, um, you know, we'll move on to other things. But anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your subs and your likes and your views. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.